citizen. Oh, oh, oh. Out of many we are. We are world citizen. Same vision is for equal rights and justice. For the people, them, what's happening to this beautiful world that we're living in? World citizen, lift up your voices. Welcome to another episode of the People Powered Planet Podcast, where each week we feature amazing solutionaries working on the solutions to the incredible problems of this planet. While others may focus on the problems, we focus on special people who really have a handle on how we can make this a people powered, peaceful planet. <laughs> So today I want to welcome a very special guest, Gene Stevens. Now, Gene Stevens is a, a, an educator, uh, a retired educator and a retired art historian, uh, but she has a YouTube channel and she's one of the most outspoken and effective activists I know on saving this beautiful planet. And so we feel very lucky to have her on this podcast. And we're going to be talking about today uh, some of the impactful things you can do to help keep this planet spinning <laughs> and prevent us from blowing ourselves off the face of this planet. So welcome, Jean. Uh, we're very pleased to have you here in the podcast. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. I appreciate all the work you do. Great, great. Well, um, I, I want to particularly move us toward focusing on an incredible event you have coming up and, and how that can be a model for others. But before I do, uh, let's go back and talk a little bit about your journey from being a, a teacher and artist. What, what took you from that into uh, and your, and teaching art history for, for years? What took you from that to being a, an activist to save our world from nuclear war? Well, I guess it started in Los Angeles when I was 13 years old and the Cuban Missile Crisis happened. And I recently learned that Los Angeles was the number one target at that period of time because of the music film and the uh, weapons industry. Um, and so I, I was traumatized and I think that I actually have um, PTSD from growing up in that era. Everyone, you know, I remember some of my neighbor kids, their family were building bomb shelters and growing up with duck and cover, the absurdity of that. And Khrushchev banging his shoe on the on the table. And unfortunately, I think that all of the the youth of today, and the uh, those that were born after 1985, they didn't grow up with that. And teaching art history and traveling the world. Uh, in 1983, I traveled across the Philippines and the Soviet Union on the Trans-Siberian train across China and then into Eastern and Western Europe and all of the art treasures of the world, uh, both in Northern Europe and, and uh, also in the, the Southern equatorial areas uh, everywhere on the planet. We have thousands of years of, of Western civilization that's at stake right now. And um, so uh, that's a long answer to your question, but I hope that it answers it. Well, that, that, that makes me feel very close to you because I had a similar experience. I was also uh, moved into action by the Cuban Missile Crisis. And, and I remember uh, all the fear in the air. I was growing up in Washington, D.C., and friends were mobilizing into the uh, friends of my sisters were mobilizing to, uh, with the military to try to create what, what kind of defense can you possibly create? But they were mobilizing anyway. And uh, the schools were telling us to get down under our desks and, and put our heads over, hands over our head. And I refused. I said, uh, have you seen the pictures of Hiroshima? I mean, this school's not going to be here. What good is it going to do us to get under our desks? We've got to prevent nuclear war. Well, I was sent to the principal's office for that, as I was numerous times for uh, being a uh, an upstart activist in school, but I also, uh, like you, traveled to the Soviet Union uh, uh, in the height of the Cold War in, in uh, 1964 and just found the Russian people were wonderful people and they all wanted to have our music and our, 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 and, our and, and our blue jeans. And I thought, my God, we're going to blow up the world. All, all these people, all they want to do is... Uh, uh, listen to Elvis Presley and the Beatles and, and wear American blue jeans. I mean, this was ridiculous. The people were all loving each other. And the com com countries, you know, were, the, the nation state system was tearing us apart. And so, uh, like you, I, I was moved because this is an incredible 
gift, this beautiful planet we have, this incredible art history and all that. You know, every it, I mean, I could accept the idea that I would die, even that my my friends would die, but that all art, all history, all all the things that humans are about, all the nature, all the incredible, uh, wonderful dogs and cats and animals, and to blow all that up for some temporal stupid reason was just beyond comprehension. So like you, I've been moved to a, a life of activism and uh, welcome you in, in that, uh, uh, it, because you're an incredible light in that effort. I was in the Soviet Union in 83. So another yes. really hot moment in history. Moving a little forward from that uh, to the current era, I understand that you also organized a film festival in Taos. Yes, the Taos Environmental Film Festival. It uh, started in 2015 and it was part of the Taos Fall Arts Festival, and then it morphed into um, moving it to around uh, April uh, because of uh, Earth Day on the 22nd. So then I, I had that through 2022, and then in 2023, I did outreach. And now this year, uh, well, in 2023, I started working with the Albuquerque Veterans for Peace and Concerned Citizens for Nuclear Safety and other people who are trying to abolish nuclear weapons, including some folks from Pax Christi or with the Archbishop in Santa Fe. And uh, and many other people joined in with the Albuquerque Peace Fest, which was around the Hiroshima Nagasaki dates uh, in August. And, and so we've been doing outreach. And so um, this is now a little outreach that we're doing because we wanted to bring awareness because Albuquerque has the largest amount of stored nuclear weapons in the United States, just a few miles away from where the Guild Cinema screening of the television event. And I was so inspired by what you and Melanie did with uh, Nicholas Meyer and, and uh, Jeff Daniels at Lawrence, Kansas for the 40th anniversary of the momentous, most momentous TV television event in history and the made for TV. And, and of the day after. And so I wanted to bring awareness and, and you're also having it on PBS in April. So it, I'm hoping that it's, uh, the movie's just um, down the road from UNM in the little park where the, we're gonna have a rally and musicians and uh, peace, uh, ban the bomb speakers is adjacent to UNM. So my dream is that it's on the main drag there in Albuquerque that it will bring awareness not only to the uh, the issue that we're facing right now, but also that you're going to be launching the film in April on PBS. Perfect. Those are the kind of things we want to discuss a little more here as a model for other people to, to take the kind of action uh, that you have. Um, now, uh, first of all, uh, uh, tell, tell us a little bit more about what, what how watching the movie television event uh, impacted you? Well, I really think it's an important film because the day after was really about gloom and doom. And it was important because it um, affected President Reagan because of the gloom and doom and the horrific elements of it. And television event is important because it, it uh, takes people through the impact of the day after, and yet it shows humor, black humor, and um, the interviews, and it shows the impact of what the film did. It brought Reagan to Gorbachev to shake hands, and they came so close to abolishing nuclear weapons. It's the great tragedy that Reagan had that uh, that dear affection for the Star Wars, which never happened, and it's a great tragedy in human history because they came just a hair's breadth away from signing off all nuclear weapons on the planet. And even uh -huh. then, I think there were about 70,000 nuclear weapons and they brought it down to about 14, which was 14,000, which was a huge achievement, but not enough. And now we're back in a Cold War situation again in New Mexico with Los Alamos National Lab and Sandia Lab, but uh, Los Alamos National Lab is making the plutonium pits which they're wanting to modernize all of the 450 ICBMs that are parked in the heartland of the United States on hair trigger alert. And everyone in the world is pretty much oblivious to this, this horrific situation. They need to get rid of those ICBMs. Now, I've learned recently that the submarines, at least 
if they were to start uh, shoot off one by accident, apparently they can bring it back. Um, I don't know how verified that information is, but I read that recently. Um, but the ICBMs for sure, they are, you know, uh, an accident waiting to happen. Yeah, one of the things Dan Ellsberg said is that, you know, that it's crazy to have those because they just make Kansas and they make the whole Harlan, they make the United States a target. And like you said, they can't be recalled if they're launched. And so that causes us to do a launch on warning strategy, which is if we think the Soviets might launch a first strike, then we launch a strike first so that we can knock, knock them out before they can knock out ours. So it's totally insane. And especially since one submarine can wipe out basically all the major cities in the Soviet Union anyway, we, we'd have no need for a land-based thing. It's all there because people are making money on it. And they're making money at the risk of... Uh, really plunging our our world into uh, uh, in Armageddon and uh, uh, destroying the this precious environment uh, that keeps this planet going. Uh, so um, I, th I think it's so crucial that you're you've you've figured out a way to merge uh, uh, filmmaking. You have a, cha a YouTube channel and the festival and you've actually uh, made some films yourself. Is that right? That's correct. And I made one actually that was a um, uh, Women in Film International short uh, uh, film case, uh, a selection for New Mexico. And it was, it was really um, not very good uh, footage because I filmed from TV, but it was my life story I, from the time I was one year old till the time I was about 20 years old. And I retraced growing up in Southern California and my parents were involved in uh, water skiing and then I went into the surf era and then it showed the Cuban Missile Crisis and I created the music. I, I did it all on GarageBand so it was a music video and then it went into Dick Clark and American Bandstand and then it went into the and I ended up moving down in Laguna Beach and um, the surf scene and Tim Leary and the you know the whole thing with Martin Luther King what was going on with Vietnam and uh, all of the protests and the summer of love. And I graduated from Huntington Beach High School in 1967, the height of all of that. And so I think that also impacted me uh, very deeply and all of the art and films around the surfing community and for peace and love and, you know, get out of Vietnam. <laughs> a surfer girl. I love to see that. Uh, you know, later, I don't know, later you can either add the link to the chat or just, uh, uh, but I know you have your YouTube channel. You can just tell us verbally, how do we get to your YouTube channel? Well, it's, it's Gene Stevens on, on YouTube is my channel. And um, uh, the film I was just talking about is called One Life. It's on both Vimeo and YouTube. So if you went One right. Life and then comma Gene Stevens, then you would see it. It sounds terrific. Uh, I can't wait to see it. Uh, and I will have to come have you come on down here to Baja, where uh, uh, where I live right next to the beach, and we have a lot of surfers. Uh, but I'm a boogie boarder. Uh, I don't quite stand up on the board, but I get a Me great too. ride. Oh, good. Well, come on down and boogie board with us. We'd love to have you. <laughs> yeah, I used to live on Kauai. Built a house there back in the early '80s. Great. Well, and that's one of the things we why we love this precious planet. And we've got these amazing uh, oceans and places to live. And it's just it's such a precious marvel of life in this vast emptiness of space. And so crucial uh, that we're all working together to uh, to preserve it and keep it uh, keep it around for future generations and for all the animals. Uh, <laughs> um, so um, continuing, uh, let's talk specifically about uh, how people uh, if, if, if people have uh, now watched the film television event and said, yes, I'd love to get this out to my community. I'd love to share this with others and, uh, uh, and, 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 and not just watch this and sit back and say, tisk, tisk, the two bad things were so bad and uh, great that those people had courage back in 83. Uh, how can we inspire them to have that courage now? And, and, and how did you actually move from uh, seeing a film you like to the action event coming up? And, and then tell us more about that and, and the different uh, organizations that you helped mobilize, like Veterans for Peace and others to, to put this all together? Well, um, the Veterans for Peace and like Concerned Citizens for Nuclear Safety and others, we all kind of organized together. Uh, and so I'm just part of, of that. 
but I want to mention that I wanted to bring in musicians this time and the film and, and with the rally because I believe in multimedia and 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 to bring awareness of your important important film television event and because they people can go online and see it and, and pay like five dollars and it's really an important film to see if you know they can't go to the event and then I will be filming and taking photographs and I'll put it on my YouTube channel afterward to preserve the event. And I just want a rebirth of, I watched the Grammys. I don't know if you watched the recent Grammys. It was terrific. And, and Joni Mitchell's kind of part of that era and what she did after all of her stroke. And, and they had a tribute even to Bert Backrack, you know, what the world needs now is love, sweet love and, and all of the musicians and hip hop and, and then Michael Jackson on Netflix right now, they have the making of We Are the World. And that is such a, a really uh, a, a footprint that we need to replicate again. Uh, we've got to get the youth inspired because they've done a great job for climate change, but they weren't educated about the threat of nuclear weapons. And luckily, Christopher Nolan at the recent BAFTA Awards this week, he mentioned that he wanted to thank all of the um, the people who are working for um, nuclear uh, deterrence, or, or he didn't say abolition, but the, the the message was that we need to get this under control, and um, and I'm hoping that if he wins the Academy Award, that he'll make a, even a deeper and richer statement. But the music, and I feel like, God, if I could get a hold of Quincy Jones, because last night I watched the, the biopic on him on Netflix, and what an amazing life, and how he used music, and how he put it all together for We Are the World. I mean, We Are the World wouldn't have happened without Quincy Jones, because he put the whole thing, and you could see how he laid the tracks, how when you see We Are the World, the making of it, how he took like uh, one musician, uh, like Michael Jackson would be with another musician and Bob Dylan kind of had like a musical block and then they got Stevie Wonder in there and he opened up his, you know, because, you know, artists have blocks and it was so real and so important. And I just can't say enough of it. And with you being friends with Martin Sheen, he was recently on a, a Zoom with Dr. Helen Caldicott, one of the greatest heroes for the abolition of nuclear weapons. And, uh, and then that video uh, also on, on Netflix, Einstein on the Beach. Uh, not Einstein on the Beach. That's another really great one, but Einstein and the Bomb. And, um, and so I just think that films are and music is a path to that we need because we've got to generate 8 billion people to get those nine men that are holding nuclear weapons and holding us all hostage to stop that if this is just insanity and each day it just seems to be getting worse and worse and worse. And so that's basically why television event being on PBS, because it's very viewable. It has humor. Nicholas Meyer is great at uh, talking about the miraculous making of the day after no one knew that, you know, so you get the backstory of, of how this came about. And so that was a miracle and I'm hoping for another miracle and I'll do everything in my life, what I have left. I'm 74 <laughs> years old right now to make that happen. And if Quincy Jones, if you're out there, we got to do it again. Your last dying breath, you know, this is so important. Wow. Wow. Well, that's so crucial what you said. And yes, that was a terrific statement that uh, Christopher Nolan gave uh, at the uh, at receiving the BAFTA award for directing Oppenheimer and that movie Oppenheimer uh, at least uh, focused back on the nuclear issue for huge numbers of people. Uh, sadly, they fell short of when they had the scene where he was watching uh, slides of the Hiroshima devastation. They showed his expression and feelings, but they never showed the clips of the actual devastation. So we released uh, uh, we released uh, the missing clips from Oppenheimer, the missing scenes, uh, which were in 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 uh, which, of course, come through in a television event. And we're also uh, uh, in uh, in our film, The World is My Country. Uh, there's just some brief scenes of Hiroshima where you see uh, that actual 
devastation and how moving that is. And so it's a good way to open the discussion, but we've got to carry it forward with these other films that you're mentioning. Uh, so, so thank you for that. Um, so I, I would like to talk much more specifically and just like the nuts and bolts of it. Um, you, you know, to a person out there who has, uh, uh, they've watched the uh, television event, they, they maybe heard about it, they clicked on to our website. Uh, now, how, how would they actually go about uh, you know, getting a theater, organizing a screening, getting a march going from that. Tell us sort of step by step uh, what you went through to do this so it might be a model for others. And and how did you get the director? Uh, to He's going to zoom into the event, is that correct? We have Jeff a recording Dan of him. And, uh, and because uh, the theater is the oldest theater in um, cinema, little theater in, in Albuquerque. It was established in the 1960s. And so they show um, art house films and, and really terrific films, um, you know, new releases. And so it seats 144 people. It's not a huge theater, but it's right on Central Avenue, right on the main drag in Albuquerque, just five blocks from UNM. And uh, the park will be adjacent to UNM. And I, first of all, you have to get a hold of the director or the distributor and they, they charge a fee and you have to work that out with them and make it uh, so it's worthwhile for both parties. And, and so you get the screening rights and um, Melanie was very helpful with that, uh, uh, making the contact with Jeff Daniels. And um, from there I had, you know, then I had already discussed with the theater and then they charge a fee and you have to pay them and, and work all of that out. And then the publicity, and they have a website, um, guildcinema.com. And um, from there, then you have to do publicity and make posters and get people involved in social media and whatever you can do. And to make it, um, to parlay the event more rather than just having a screening, I thought it was important that we have um, a march four blocks away and we're having a banner designed now it's about 25 feet uh, across and um, we'll go to the park and, and then there'll be the musicians. And in the past, we have just a little portable microphone and uh, with a stand and then speakers and hopefully to educate uh, the university students and all of the others uh, who may be walking by and in the vicinity or who came for it specifically to be part of the movie and the event. So to kind of make it a, a multimedia event, I think makes it more attractive. And I think it is so important that we let people know that 40th anniversary of the day after and this new film, it's um, the television event, I believe was made around 2020. So it's a fairly new film, but it's been underexposed and it needs to get, I mean, it was screened it opened like a Tribeca and it's had exposure, but it needs to get into the masses, hugely important. And it's very viewable. Uh, and um, it's, it's you, you, you leave uh, revitalized. You don't feel like you wanna slash your wrist afterwards. Because I think that so many people, they don't wanna talk about nuclear weapons because you can't even wrap your head around the, the effects of it. And so people just, don't want to talk about it and they want to pretend like it doesn't exist and we just can't do that we if we do that any longer you know it, it's like so many experts have said that it's a miracle that we're still afloat with civilization a miracle in 2024 how much longer it's only a matter of time when someone's going to make a mistake there have already been near misses back in 83 in fact four months after I left Moscow, the doctor, uh, I mean, uh, Colonel Petrov, he had to make the decision whether he was going to push the button. And he had only about 15 minutes. That's what the president of the United States would have. And he chose yeah. not to. That was an incredible story where he, uh, every single uh, radar and the computers all confirmed that there was an incoming American attack. Uh, one computer verified another. The only missing piece was that the aerial, uh, they couldn't find aerial uh, uh, photos proving it, uh, but that was because of the cloud cover. 
and he disobeyed orders by not pushing the button. He was punished afterwards for it, but he actually saved the world. There's a very interesting movie, The Man Who Saved the World. So <laughs> that's also good. Well, we're getting close to the hour, so let's go ahead and tell us the date and time of the event, how people can join it, uh, how they can uh, uh, follow up, perhaps because you mentioned there will be people videotaping, see scenes of it. Uh, give us all the nuts and bolts of uh, of how people can let their friends, if they have any friends in the New Mexico area, uh, get them to come and join your event. Okay, so uh, it's this Sunday, February 25th at 1 p.m. And um, the, um, uh, the rally will be at 3 o'clock four blocks away. So if you get uh, to the, the film uh, and, and if for some reason it was a full house, you could just uh, have a little bite to eat and then we'll be marching at three o'clock with the banner four blocks away. And then we'll have the speakers and the musicians and uh, lots of great uh, music to hear and uh, hopefully exposure on Central Avenue. So that's the 25th, February, at one o'clock television event, followed by the rally and the march at uh, 2.50 to 3 o'clock. And then it'll be about an hour long. And that park is not only near uh, where all the students can come join from, from UNM, uh, the University of, of New Mexico, but it's also not far from the Kirkland Air Force Base, right, where the, the largest storage site, correct? Yeah, I think it's about four or five miles away. So letting people know, hey, you're, you're a target here, uh, <laughs> and Albuquerque, yeah. I think in the late 50s, they dropped an uh, accidentally dropped an atomic bomb on Albuquerque. Most people don't know about that. That's called Broken Arrow. And we've had several of those and it didn't detonate, luckily. But that's happened elsewhere. I think it was right. in North Carolina right. or something. And yep. uh, there have been so many near misses. It's just crazy that we're still standing and civilization is still ongoing. But now with AI and uh, what's happening with uh, there's no real functioning treaty right now. It's kind of in kind of dormancy. Uh, it, it's the scariest time on the planet and no one's talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's the most dangerous time we've been in. And it's also a time, as you said, for that, as that movie showed that uh, uh, that's also a time when we can take heart because we do have ways of taking action and making a difference and that. Uh, that's one of the reasons we, we we fell in love with the movie, as you did, because not only does it uh, capture the horror very adequately, but takes us on a journey of a hero's journey of the people who actually ended up getting this movie out and how it touched the planet and how we can all uh, touch the planet with our, our the power of media and the power of our ways of reaching out to others and, and uh, together uh, building this people powered planet. So. You've organized this incredible event in Albuquerque, and yet the state of New Mexico is incredibly dependent on uh, money from the making of nuclear weapons. In fact, I understand it dwarfs the state budget. Uh, what, poss what possible ways can you tell people to join with the Archbishop's calls for creating alternative uh, sources of funding by, by converting from nuclear to something much more positive for humanity? Do you have some thoughts on that, Gene? Well, I recently we had the legislative uh, session and the Sierra Club and many other like 350.org and many other organizations are working for uh, trying to remediate all of the issues surrounding climate change. This book here, Warheads to Windmills by Tim and Wallace, it, it they was just recently updated in, in December of 2023, and you can get it. Um, online and it's wonderful and it's not an expensive book and and this is pulling together the most important is all the climate change activists to join hands with those who are trying to abolish nuclear weapons and and my call is to retrofit the national labs into climate change remediation factories not factories for the extinction of life and, and that is my goal. And this is an important book. And we have, if we can hold hands and come together, these two forces, it would be really powerful. 
Wow, fabulous. We're going to have to take a look at that book and maybe uh, interview uh, uh, the author on our podcast. Well, thank you very much. I'll turn this back over to the uh, wonderful Melanie, our producer of the show. Uh, take it away, Melanie. Thank you, Arthur. Yes, on our website, it's theworldismycountry.com slash nuclear. And you can tads and tads of information about television event and Jean's event. Jean, you brought me to tears. You make, you're, you're so eloquent. You're so passionate. You, you're so can do. You're such an inspiration. I mean, people can do this. They can do the same thing you did. They can, they can have an event. You just gather the, the folks necessary. So I'm so, we're so thrilled and so excited that you have this event coming up. And it's so meaningful because that's what it's going to take. The people, people are like, oh, we got to um, get our leaders to do this. There's a force behind the leaders and that's the people power. And if we have, if they see all around them that the, the tide is no, no nuclear, no, stop, stop, stop. They're going to be able to take action. They're, they're, they need us more than we need them. We are the ones that can make the change. We are the ones that can do this. And it's and it, as Jean said, it almost happened. We almost got this taken care of. We don't want our children and the children's children, if we make it that long, to have to deal with this again. Why? Why? This is the moment when it needs to happen. This is the moment when there's, you know, nah, 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 danger, danger, and the house is on fire, Ooh. however you want to, whatever motivates you. This is the time. This is the time when we can do something and should do something. Everyone here, please, please, please watch television event. Get a get some buzz around it. Like like Jean said, it's going to be on PBS starting in April into stations. We have it in major markets, but it we need it in all at in all the stations. So we need your help with that. We um would love to have you join us. Just you, we ha you have our information at the bottom of our uh, website to get a hold of us. The world is my country.com. Let's gather together and get this done. So thank you, Jean. I just want to. You are such an inspiration and <laughs> Arthur's films and all and thinking back to Central Park and, and the, the film you had with Paul Newman. He was part of it. A million people went to Central Park and, and that was 62. Uh, I mean, 82. And, and it just it's so important. And then they ring, they had a ring around uh, Rocky Flats. And there's a short film called, uh, the, the, let me see, I think it's uh, Encirclement of Rocky Flats, a little short film. And that's so inspirational. But you guys are just fabulous what you've been doing so many years. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jean. Uh, um, let's go to Peter. He has uh, some great information about an online forum. Go for it, Peter. What I'm talking about is a forum that was produced by a team of almost 20 people, primarily under the sponsorship of Pax Christi, um, the, the Catholic Peace Organization, but co-sponsored by 66 secular and other religious organizations called Building a World Without Nuclear Weapons, an Urgent Imperative. It features three incredible speakers, Archbishop John Wester, um, Dr. Ira Hilfand, and Marie Dennis of Pax Christi International. It features music, discussion, uh, Q&A, uh, and most importantly, a call to action that includes several things that every person watching it can do in a couple of minutes that would further the cause of abolishing nuclear weapons. Wonderful. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. That is amazing. And I know you're going to, you're involved with what Jean's doing and you're going to be helping her with that. So thank you for that. And now let's go back to Arthur. Arthur, take it away. Okay. Well, thank you so much uh, for everyone for being with us on this People Powered Planet podcast. Join us each week and every week on the People Powered Planet. World citizen, lift up your voices. Oh, you know we got something to say. All we need is the same directions heading in one way. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel and like this video.